speaker will be DK Chenis from UCSC uh, talking more about the origin of UBT. Hello everyone, I'm TK Chen. I'm working on Ultra Diffuse Galaxy with Dusan uh, <coughs> in UCSD and also other bio collaborator. And well, I'm also going to talk about how we can produce UDG with bio simulation. Um, but in, yeah, in this case, we are trying to reproduce the UDGs in a cluster environment instead of a uh, few UDG. And especially, we are going to compare that with uh, one talk on paper, uh, the one talk on uh, 2015 paper. That's fine. Uh, <coughs> a 47 uh, coma cluster UDG in the sample that are very diff extremely diffuse and have a very high metal, uh, old star and very spherical in shape. And The motivation of this study is that, well, one of the collaborator, Karim, in fire simulation, they're, they're using the fire simulation and try to see whether the star feedback can expand also the gas and the star distribution. Actually, they can. Um, with the star form, with a very star, high star formation rate, and at, uh, at a 12 giga years, and then we see there's a very significant a radial velocity um, of the star and gas moving out of the cent center of the galaxy. So this is basically the same mechanism that we expand the dark matter hal halo and forming a core inside a galaxy that I have been working on. So this mechanism could potentially create um, uh, a very ultra diffuse galaxy. Then, um, as we are going to produce a very red UDG in the cluster environment, so we are not only using an isolated halo, but we are do also some processing of, of those halo. We are considering um, the halo mass with five times ten, uh, ten to the ten to five times ten to the eleven uh, at redshift zero, and then we also want extra uh, galaxy with fire two simulation to fill up all the range. And we will process those halo uh, by crunching them at, uh, at the crunching time at TQ. And then we stop their star formation and then do not co consider their, their gears just removed. And then we, we assume the morphologies of those stars will be the same. And then we passively evolve those stars from TQ to redshift zero according to a Simple stellar population simple model, the FSPS. We do not consider the dynamical effects of gas removal here, but in the paper that we also consider uh, removing the gas, we've, uh, we've given the gas initial velocity about 1,000 kilometers per second, and then they are producing a very similar uh, morphology. And then after we forming um, those, uh, crunching those UDG, we also try to generate a uh, galaxy image without considering the dust attenuation from the gas. And then with those uh, image, we fit them with Galfit, a very, very popular uh, model in, in observation that we are providing some sample of, of the fitting over here. And this one of the, one of the UDGs with 5 times 10 to the 10 uh, in halo mass, and then crunch at around redshift uh, 2, uh, redshift 1. And then you can see the, the image, the Galfit model, and the residue over here it, in general provide very good fit. And it also saw a very distinctive uh, character, characters of UDGs that they are very diffuse and have a very large effective radius. Then we are trying to directly compare with the Wondercom data that's shown in the in the course over there, and the the Virgo Virgo drop data over there or uh, downstairs over here, and then the color to point are our 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 simulated galaxy with um, stellar mass around ten to the 
seven at two giga years and ten five times ten to the eight at at thirteen giga years. And then uh, the color is labeled by the red color mean they, they are quantum very early on, and the blue color mean they are quantum very late on later at late time. So our galaxy matches the properties of observed UDG at a certain quantum time, especially at late time. Here we are trying to compare the uh, evolutions of the of the UDGs according to their quantum time, uh, compared with the effective radius and the surface fineness of the uh, one dot sample. The shaped area over over here represent the uh, the ma maximum and the minimum well, values of the one dot sample in in their paper. And the data over here shows the mean value. And the uh, and we saw uh, uh, six um, UDG simulated UDG with the the minimal mass is around m is around ten to the ten and the maximum mass is around ten to the eleven. And so in blue line over here and the minimum is shown in the green line over uh, up upstairs. Basically, we have observed the feedback can expand the galaxy to a very diffuse profile and provides a very uh, large effective radius comparable to, to Milky Way. And also the surface fineness is very small, especially at late time for the, for the small UDGs and at early time for the bigger UCG. For example, uh, the, the blue light over there. And if we crunch before, uh, Six second year, then we can produce a, a ultra diffuse UDG. And then we are going to enter the debate that whether those UDG are a failed dwarf galaxy or failed L star galaxy. Well, what we mean by failed dwarf galaxy is that they have a halo mass around well less than ten to eleven. And if they are not falling into the cluster and getting to getting to isolated and, and become a, a few galaxy. <coughs> if they are finally the worship the mass is up to like maybe five times ten to eleven or, or larger, then they are becoming the L star mass halo and L star mass UD. Build the L star mass UDG. In order to investigate this, and I am trying to put the uh, uh, enclosed mass again the 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 radius that we are only considering the dark matter and star in the in the sample that because most of the cluster UDG do not have much gas and then the line the dash line represent the our, our data that is that's UDG that that is satisfying the UDG criterion with the earliest uh, with the latest quantum time and the uh, Solar line represent the UDG with the earliest quantum time. And we can see uh, the Dragon 5 44 can match the most massive sample in our data. That at the quantum time, the, the halo mass is around 10 to 11. And if they do not fall into the cluster, then the, uh, the halo mass is around 5 times to 10 to 11. So we can safely call it maybe a marginally a field that L star galaxy. And then for another sample like the VCC, uh, the, the, the Rogo cluster UDG, then it's much better matched with the dwarf galaxy masses. Okay. And yeah, finally we make a, make a, make a prediction that, uh, that in, you know, in refined simulation that we can we can see that if those uh, cluster does not really fall, fall into now those UDG does not really fall into the cluster, then they will have much fuller color compared with if they are falling very early on. So we are predicting there should be a population of blue UDG in the field. And yeah, finally we have a summary over here. And then, well, UDGs are quantum galaxy expanded by stellar feedback, and they can get into the cluster environment and and got crunched, and they, they will become a, a very red UDG. And some UDG are failed as dwarf galaxy, but more massive one, uh, for example, the 
the one found by Wondokam could be a fa uh, failed L star galaxy. And we also predict there should be uh, plenty of blue UDG in the field. Quenching is on, uh, is not the most important yeah, element in changing their morphology. Uh, the feedback is, and the quenching of I'm using here is only yeah, matching the uh, the colors of, of those UDG. And also they are important because if they we could do not quench the galaxy, and they will become very uh, high surface brightness for the more massive uh, galaxy in our sample because they will just form star and then get very very bright in the center. So a lot of blue UDG, actually uh, a lot of the uh, blue UDG can be found. They are not actually in the field. They have they have no surface brightness, but you often see star forming clouds or some structures. So in your simulation, during the blue phase of the UDG, you also see substructure like that. Have you individual some of these substructures? Uh, yes, but well, we, we haven't directly looked into those UDG, uh, but they are they're still star forming and they, they have substructure over, over there. So, yeah, they're, they're quite different from the Castor UDG in that sense. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, oh. One quick final question from Yes, that that I am I'm aware of, but that that's a very important question that that I need to address. Yeah. Well, thank you again.